Hi friends, today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic that is how many ATP is formed in cellular respiration per glucose molecule. We often get 32, 36, 38 like answers. I searched a lot to find out how we reach this calculation. So let us discuss that in detail. So we will be discussing this also, how many protons that is required for synthesis of one ATP how many protons that is pumped per NADH and FADH2 entering into electron transport chain and finally number of ATP produced per pair of electrons from NADH and FADH2. So let us see the details. So this is the electron transport chain. This is the inner mitochondrial membrane where all the complexes are located. Complex 1 which is NADH dehydrogenase, 2 is saxinate dehydrogenase, 3 is cytochrome PC1 and 4 is cytochrome C oxidase and finally oxygen receives the electron and forming water. The energy derived from electron flow is utilized to pump H plus from matrix to intermembrane space. Along with the formation of ATP or phosphorylation, while this H plus moves through this ATP synthase, ADP and PI combined to form ATP. That is what is happening in electron transport gene. Electron flow and associated ATP synthesis and proton pumping creating a gradient. Now let us move into the mathematics of this process. 4 H plus pumped per electron pair or 2 electron. 2 electrons from NADH enters complex 1. And that pumps 4 protons into the intermembrane space. As per the previous concept, 3 protons are required for 1 ATP synthesis. 3 protons should pass through this ATP synthase for the formation of 1 ATP. Number of protons pumped per NADH is 4H plus in complex 1, 4H plus in complex 3 and 2H plus in complex 4. 2 is utilized for the formation of water. So total 4 plus 4 plus 2, 10. 10 H plus is pumped per pair of electrons from NADH to oxygen. Therefore number of ATP produced per pair of electrons from NADH to oxygen is 10 by 3 that is 3.33 taken as 3. Now let us see what happens when FADH2 pass through this electron transport chain. FADH2 that is formed during this conversion of succinate to fumarate which is a part of Krebs cycle directly enters complex 2 that is a succinate dehydrogenase bypassing this complex 1. Therefore the number of protons pumped per FADH2 or succinate is 4 plus 2 is equal to 6 less number of protons is pumped into the intermembrane space as far as FADH2 is concerned. That's why the number of ATP synthesized from FADH2 is low compared to NADH. Therefore, number of ATP that is produced per pair of electrons from FADH2 to oxygen is 6 by 3, that is 2 ATP. This was a previous concept. Now moving into the present concept. According to the present concept, recent editions of many textbooks we could see these four protons are required for one ATP synthesis. Why the reason is entry of ADP and PI into mitochondria and export of ATP to cytoplasm ATP is utilized in the cytoplasm all requires proton translocation. Therefore let us rework the calculation. Number of protons pumped per NADH as we know 4 plus 4 plus 2 that is 10. Number of ATP produced that is equal to 10 by 4 therefore it is 2.5 ATP in the case of FADH2 number of protons pumped is 4 plus 2 6 and number of ATP synthesized per pair of electrons from FADH2 to oxygen is 6 by 4 that is 1.5 ATP and this is a new concept hope you get how we reach this calculation now moving into the next question that is why 36 instead of 38 so this is what is happening in respiration in glycolysis 2 ATP and 2 NADH are produced and that is equivalent to NADH 2 into 3 as per the old method 6 ATP and in Krebs cycle 2 ATP 8 NADH that is 8 into 3 24 ATP and 2 FADH 2 2 into 2 4 ATP and total it will be 38 ATP 24 28 30 36 38 it will be 38 ATP 
Why it is considered as 36? The reason is 2 NADH here that is synthesized in cytoplasm that should be transported into mitochondria for that transport per NADH requires an ATP or 2 ATP is required to transport 2 NADH to mitochondria that is why total net gain is 38 minus 2 that is 36 that is why in some textbooks it is given as 36 now moving into the ATP and NADH synthesized at each stages of respiration so this is number of ATP or glucose synthesized as per the new method and this is as per the old method 1 NADH is equal to 2.5 ATP and this is 1 NADH is equal to 3 ATP let us see so in glycolysis this is glycolysis 2 ATP is used at the beginning that is called as the energy investment phase in glycolysis later 4 ATP is synthesized as this is a 3 carbon compound this from this step onwards this should run twice therefore 4 ATP net gain is 2 ATP 2 NADH is synthesized while glyceraldehyde phosphate is converted to 1,3-pi-phosphoglycerate so after glycolysis net gain is 2 ATP and 2 NADH so it is 2 into 2.55 in the case as per the new method whereas in the old method it is, it is 2 into 3 6 plus 2 8 ATP from glycolysis here it is 7 ATP there is a link reaction that is followed by Krebs cycle and we will be getting 32 and 38 let us see what's happening in Krebs cycle and this is a link reaction two pyruvate molecule that is formed in glycolysis that is in cytoplasm that is transported to mitochondria where it is converted to a two carbon compound acetyl CoA with the release of NADH so there are two pyruvate molecules from glycolysis therefore two NADH is synthesized in link reaction in Krebs cycle an ATP is formed when succinyl CoA this is a high energy bond is converted to succinate actually it is GTP both are interconvertible and 3 NADH is formed per pyruvate molecule at isocitrate alpha ketoglutarate stage this is 6 carbon and this is 5 carbon then there is 5 carbon to 4 carbon succinyl coa there also an NADH is synthesized and malate to oxaloacetate so then an FADH2 is formed between succinate and fumarate that enters the complex 2 of electron transport chain so in total in Krebs cycle as two pyruvate molecules cycles in Krebs cycle total number of ATP produced is 2 total number of NADH produced is 2 into 3 that is 6 and FADH2 produced is 2 per glucose molecule as glycolysis yields 2 pyruvate molecule so let us see the calculation so link reaction 2 NADH that is equal to 2 into 2.5 that is 5 2 into 3 6 whereas in Krebs cycle it is 2 GTP equivalent to 2 ATP 2 and 2 whereas 6 NADH is synthesized in Krebs cycle per glucose molecule that is 6 into 2.5 that is 15 and 6 into 3 here it is 18 whereas 2 FADH2 is synthesized that is equivalent to 2 into 1.5 as per the new method that is equal to 3 and 2 into 2 that is equal to 4 so in total as per the new method theoretical yield of number of ATP molecules per glucose when we add up it will end up in 32 ATP molecules as per the old method it is 38 as we discussed earlier in some textbooks it is considered as 36 the reason is 2 NADH that is synthesized in glycolysis for transport of that NADH to mitochondria ATP is required and that is reduced that is 38 minus 2 36 in some textbooks hope you are fine with this calculation if you get any new information please add in the comment section and that's it you are with biology exams for thank you so much for your support